Welcome everybody, Andrew and Zach here today with half Ass Professional. Today we're going to be talking about competition shooting and we've got a video, it's a little different than what we've done before. We've got a full slew of competition ready guns that we're going to talk about in detail, but not too much annoying detail. Before we get there, I feel like, what's the Rafiki from The Lion King? Yes, Simba. But everything the light touches. Yeah. One lucky subscriber is going to get 500 rounds of Winchester 115 brass case 9mm just by subscribing to the channel. So what I need you to do, like, follow, subscribe. Subscribe is the most important, but guys, we likes and comments also help the algorithms here too. Just give us a thumbs up that you like the video, because again, we want to, we're not doing content just for the sake of doing content. We want to put stuff out there that we think is a gap in the market that people may want to see. Yeah. And every time you like the video, you know, it, it increases the likelihood that you'll keep seeing more of us. Yeah. Yeah, that's the last thing people want to see. <laughs> Our two dumbass. Yeah, like, follow, subscribe to get some nine milk. All right, so in front of us, we've got a slew of competition pistols, starting with the Canic Rival, leading up to the Staccato XC. I'm not going to bore you too much in this part of the video with this information, but uh, we do want to talk a little bit about price point. So it is not crazy expensive to get into competitive shooting. No, you, you can take a stock gun out there and go run, and as long as you're safe, you can do well. So, but for the sake of this video, we've got the quintessential competition pistols from the popular brands that we're shooting that we see in, in competitions. Just about every manufacturer who makes kind of a flagship full size duty gun, they also make kind of a slightly longer, slightly fancier more competition focused version of that gun and that's essentially what we have here we have you know the most common examples the glocks the six the cz's the canics and the smith and wessons of the competition platform is what these are yeah starting at a price point of mid sixes up to the price of a used car yeah with the oh. staccato xc at forty five hundred dollars yeah depending on how many mags you want to get yeah, the mags are not cheap either, but there's a reason why. Sure. I mean, they're phenomenal and gorgeous mags, and they feed it so awesome. And they're so shiny. They are very shiny and very expensive. Very expensive. So without further ado, we're going to get straight into the range video. All right. This week, we're talking about competition pistols. Now, every company out there makes a competition pistol, and there's a lot of things that we kind of try to look for when we're trying to decide about getting into a pistol. Almost every single gun we have here on the table is gonna be a full size, double stack handgun that's gonna be maybe on the longer side of the barrel length with much more aggressive texturing, both on the grip and on the slide, and usually some sort of flaring to the magwell or an added on flared magwell. A lot of times they like to put a lot of fancy colors on them too, because hey, you know, you don't necessarily have to be practical when you're out there for competition shooting. And a lot of times we see oversized controls and upgraded triggers as well. So we have a really wide array of guns starting at the very, very affordable with a basic Canic rival going all the way up to a Staccato XC Competition 2011. Pretty drastic difference there. We're going to do a couple really basic drills here and we're going to kind of see how these guns perform, how they feel, and see what we like and what we don't like about all of them. And we're going to start out with this Canic. So right off the rip, we have a very upgraded trigger, one of the best upgraded triggers you can get out there. We have a oversized magazine release, oversized slide release. We have a flared magwell, really aggressive slide serrations. We have some aggressiveness to the grip, not super, but enough to help you with uh, handling that recoil a little bit. And we have some upgraded sights. So we have that nice fiber optic sight there for a little bit better tracking. And of course, the capability of using optics, but we don't have an optic on here. So let's see how she does. Shooter ready. Shooter ready. We're gonna do uh, hammered pairs in the center, just a couple of double taps to warm up. Right. Stand by. Nice and smooth, tracks really good. Recoil is very manageable. Let's do a couple more. And one more. Yeah, incredibly smooth gun, very controllable in the hand. I can definitely notice 
that the texturing on the grip is not as aggressive. The gun does still move on me quite a bit, but we'll really start to notice that when we start to transition from targets and our grip may start suffering a little bit. So now I'm gonna use the last couple shots I have to transition between all the targets downrange. We're gonna see how it goes. Stand by. Ready. So I still had good control over it, still maintained it really well. But yeah, by that, that last group with those three shots, it was starting to get loose on me just a little bit. But still, overall, an absolutely great gun, especially for the price. Just about anybody can get into a Canik nowadays, and these are just great guns. We're going to go ahead and put these down below. Next up, we have the Smith & Wesson Competitor. This gun right here, a lot of the same features. We have oversized controls. We have optics capability. We have very big, bright, upgraded iron sights. This guy, we do have an optic on. We have that flared magwell. We do have an upgraded trigger. It doesn't come standard with this trigger, but it does come from the factory with an upgraded trigger. And the big difference here is now we're an alloy gun, so it's, there's a little bit more weight to it to help reduce that recoil, and we do have more aggressive texturing in the grip to really help keep that control sure. on it. Same deal, we're gonna start out with a couple double taps, and then we're gonna move on to the transition exercise. Shooter ready. So right off the bat, I noticed the gun is moving up and down a lot less in my hand. Then that's a lot because the gun is just heavier, okay? Also because of the really aggressive texturing on the front strap and the back strap, it doesn't really have the ability to slip much in my hand. Both these guns have the same barrel length. They're both balanced very similar. We just have a little bit more chunkiness here to really help cut down on that recoil. A lot of my shots are closer together a little bit more consistency, which really helps when you're out there on competitions. Let's go ahead and try out a transition and let's see how we do. Shooter ready. ready. So not quite as fast as I did with the Canik, mainly because the trigger on this has a little bit more room to move and a little bit more weight to it, but my accuracy is far better. Going a little slower does have some pros, um, but all together, this is a really, really great gun. If you're already used to shooting like a base model Smith & Wesson, you're gonna be completely familiar with how this gun works. All the controls are in the exact same spot. Everything's just easier. Speaking of familiarity, one of the most common platforms in the entire world is gonna be the CZ75. And today we do have the CZ Shadow 2, which is a very common competition pistol right here. Just like the other guns, we have an aggressive aluminum uh, texture. We have very large oversized control, Dawson precision, competition iron sights, and we do have some flaring in the magwell, but we don't have a big bulky added on flared magwell. Now this gun is an all steel gun, it is very heavy. I expect the recoil to be very, very low. Now all Shadow 2s are gonna have an absolutely amazing trigger out of the box. Most of the CZ Hammerfire guns do. This one has an even further upgraded trigger that's gonna be single action only. Very light, very crisp, very fast. So let's see how she does. Everything's just buttery smooth in these guns. All right, same deal, double taps in the center, shooter ready. The gun is barely moving whatsoever. Let's do it again. Ooh, I didn't quite move the trigger enough for it to reset. <laughs> One more time. Very quick, very easy to aim. That bright red front sight acts very similarly to a red dot. As soon as it's up in front of me, I see it so clearly. The trigger moves so little and it's so light. It breaks nice and there's virtually no recoil with this gun. Let's go ahead and do that transition. Stand by. Ready. So quick, so quick, so controllable. These are absolutely great guns. The CZ75 platform is one of the most popular weapon platforms in the entire world. This is essentially just taking a gun everybody knows and loves, 
dressing it up with every upgrade you can get and getting an out of the box, just phenomenal shooter. Now, keeping with that trend of guns you may already be very familiar with, we have a SIG P320. Now, SIG has their own competition shooting team and they design competition guns all the time. This is the DH3, which is the full size with iron sights P320. We're gonna have a flared magwell. We do still have the same controls and the same upgraded trigger as the X series guns, but those are already pretty nice. We have nice, big, bright iron sights with an optics mounting footprint. And we do have some lightning cuts on here to really help everything cycle for speed shooting. We do have that nice powdered, gritty grip on here to really bite into your hands. Let's go ahead and see how the SIG performs. What makes it different than a Polymer 320? What makes it different? Well, it's gonna have, first of all, it's gonna have that metal alloy grip. You're starting to see that kind of trend all throughout. It's gonna add so much weight to the gun to just like that CZ, really cut down on recoil. All right, shooter ready? Shooter ready. Stand by. Ooh. I'm not used to that SIG trigger. It is smooth. There was barely any recoil, but the trigger does have to travel out a lot further than the other guns that I, I just shot. Let's try that again. Stand by. All right, that was much, much better, much better. Again. Very controllable. I'm not seeing a lot of kind of a flipping up of the gun because of the weight of the frame and the weight of everything. The gun more so just kind of rises to as a whole unit and it doesn't really have a lot of muzzle rise. So you're staying really close to on target and you're recovering between shots so much quicker. Let's go ahead and do that transition. Stand by. Very smooth, very fast. The SIG is not my favorite gun of choice, simply just because I have very little experience with the SIG, but everything about this gun is smooth. It feels comfortable in my hand. It aims really well. If you already like SIG 320s, looking into something like the DH3 or any of the X5 series, you couldn't go wrong with these. You're gonna love them. Now, Everybody out there has a Glock, right? You probably have one hidden under every couch cushion and every ish tissue box and every gun safe, every pocket. Everybody loves to deck out their Glocks to customize them. Now, Glock does make a factory competition gun. It's the Gen 5 Glock 34. That's the gun that they make to stay up to date with all competition shooting. This is a Gen 5 Glock 34 that we have customized. So everybody loves to trick their Glocks out. This one's gonna be coming with a stippled texture. You know, this is aftermarket. We're gonna be talking about it, a flared magwell added on, an upgraded trigger. We do have optics on board and we do have some nice lightning cuts and some porting to really speed up the cycle rate and cut down on that recoil. Now this is a pure polymer frame gun. Nothing's different there. So it is much, much lighter, but with that extra porting, that's really gonna help cut down on that muzzle rise. Let's see how we do. Shooter ready? Shooter ready. Stand by. Ooh, okay. Same deal with the SIG, just kind of feeling that trigger, getting used to it. Ooh, okay. Very accurate shot. The Glock 34 has a nice long barrel, really good sight radius. Um, it's very smooth, very controllable, especially with that porting on there. Let's see how we do on the transition drill. Turn that red dot up just a little bit. All right. Fast, smooth. That extra lightning cuts really help speeds up the slide. A lot of times you'll see with lengthened guns, sometimes they suffer from a slower cycle speed just because there's more weight. So doing things like this really helps. And because of that porting, we don't really see a lot of the recoil and this gun cycles great. It's smooth, it's fast. That Timney trigger, absolutely worth it. Even if you just have a stock Glock, getting a nice new trigger in there can really bring these guns to life. There's no rule that says you can't take a bone stock Glock to a competition, just saying. Now, the moment we've been waiting for, okay? This is the competition gun you get into if you've tried everything else, 
There's not really any other option. You just tell, tell yourself you have to have the best, okay? This is the Staccato XC. We're gonna have a compensator out here on the end of the barrel with kind of an island front sight. So as the slide is cycling, the front sight stays stationary all the time. So you never really lose tracking of your sights. This is a nice big full weight metal gun, 2011. So we have all the nice controls of a 1911, big oversized safety levers, slide releases, super crisp triggers, and great grip and slide texturing. But we get all the really great benefits of modern pistols like that nice double stack nine millimeter magazine. So everything's hand fit, everything's polished smooth. These guns are just absolutely beautiful and a joy to shoot. So let's go ahead and get some rounds down range and see how we like it. Shooter ready? Shooter ready. Damn, uh... So fast, blazing fast. Let's do it again. Those shots were pretty much touching. <laughs> One more time. The gun doesn't move, it just doesn't. When, when I look through this red dot, I see my red dot, I see my shot, and there's a little bit of movement there, but the actual red dot never leaves the target. It's so incredibly easy for me to make a follow-up shot. I feel so confident in pulling the trigger as fast as possible with this gun. It's just that smooth, that low recoil. This is a finely tuned machine that is designed exactly for this and nothing else. Let's go ahead and hit that transition. Shooter ready? Shooter ready. Standby. Never once lost the dot. The transitions were smooth all throughout the shooting. Absolutely beautiful. These guns will set you back about the price of a used car, but I'm telling you, they're way more fun to drive than a beat up Honda Civic. If anybody has any questions at all about getting into the world of competitive shooting, Hit us up. We're more than happy to share every bit of information that we've learned over the years and then stuff that is just regurgitated from the guys that we learned from too. I mean, you have to start somewhere. So please leave us a comment in the description below or not a description in the comment section below. If you have any questions on things, if you need recommendations for things, but I will tell you, get some trigger time behind some of these platforms rather than shopping online and going, I want one of those. You can put it in your hand. It can feel like a two by four. Get some trigger time on. Anybody is welcome to come in here and shoot any of my guns to get a feel for them. And so we start working through some of this stuff. It's a good time. It's a lot of fun. And you're becoming a more proficient and better shooter while you're doing it. So. But do you have anything else to add on the word of choosing a pistol for competition shooting? I'll leave you on one thing. The guy who buys the $500 gun and $1,000 worth of ammo is always going to be a better shooter than the guy who bought a $1,500 gun who can't afford to shoot. That's true. <laughs> All right, everybody. Don't forget, like, follow, subscribe on the channel for a chance to win 500 rounds of 9mm. I am very excited about the next giveaway. I want to get to 2,500 subs so bad because I'm going to do a poll on this next one between two different options for when we hit 10,000 subs, and it's going to be worth it. So more to follow on that. We take, thank you for taking the time to listen to us ramble on. This video is near and dear to our hearts because it's something we're both passionate about. But we hope to see you guys soon. And uh, that's about it. You got anything else? Nope. Have a great day. All right. See you guys. Bye.